Welcome to the College of Knowledge, this time the Four Walls of Leadership. A renowned TEDx speaker, facilitator and corporate strategist who's passionate about offering leadership guidance to both young and mature professionals. Here is Rapson Shumba. Very excited about what I'm going to talk about today. It's a topic that has been burning in my heart for a long time and it's called the Four Walls of Leadership. Where does it all begin? I got my first job at seven and a half years and I see eyes bulging, wondering, how did you get a job at seven years? Well, my employer was my mother back in the village. I went to my mother looking for money and she says to me, son, money does not grow on trees. By the way, don't tell the International Labor Organization because that's called child labor and she can go into trouble. Money does not grow on trees. You need to do something about getting your own money. I said, but mom, I'm seven years. How do I get money? She says, simple. I've got a vegetable garden. By the way, it was a flourishing garden. Five and a half kilometers from our house, back in the village, 420 kilometers from here. So she says, I've got a flourishing vegetable garden. You need to help me with it. Secondly, there are people who are buying our vegetables on credit. You are going to be the official debt collector. And for all the debt that you are collecting, I'm giving you a percentage of that money. Of course, I was very excited. Long story short, I went into the community and one specific Sunday, I went to an old lady in the community who was living with three old, uh, young children. And I said to her, I've come to collect money. Of course, with not so friendly a face. You have to put on that face when you're collecting money. Especially when you know there's something in it for you. So I told her I came to collect money. She was not amused by that. She says, go back, tell your mother I need an adult to talk to about money. Secondly, I don't have the money. You have to be considerate, young man. Of course, I was not happy with her reaction. But there's one thing that struck me when I looked at that particular house. There was a huge crack in the wall. So I said, let me give you a bit of advice. I appointed myself an advisor. Old lady, there's a crack in the wall. If you don't do something about this particular crack, you run the risk of this house burying you. She obviously told me to mind my own business. Quote, unquote, young men, if you want to live long, you have to mind your own business. If you want to have full set of teeth by the time you reach 55, please back off from adult stories. I went away sad, but at the same time happy that I gave advice. Long story short, three months later, that house came tumbling down. Three of the walls tumbled down. Fortunately, she was not in the house. But like most leaders, she stood up and said, this house came tumbling down because of the curse that was done by a young man who came to my house. These are the very ways that he told me, this house will tumble down. Those were her words about the advice I'd given her. Is this not the sort of picture that you see in leaders today, corporate, communal, political? We get free advice, we get all the counsel that we need in the world. We don't take it sometimes. And when things start coming down, when things tumble down, we point at everybody else but ourselves for those problems. We refuse to take responsibility for the outcomes of our own leadership. I'm speaking to you now about building something that is strong. Of course, this comes out of having thought about leadership across the continent and having traveled across the continent and speaking to various leaders, particularly government ones, about what needs to happen for us to build a better Africa. Let's unpack the walls. Incidentally, behind me, there's a wall. I didn't even know that there was going to be a wall behind me. But we are unpacking the four walls of leadership. At its core, leadership is about vision. It's about seeing things for what they can be, not necessarily what they are now. Having sight is what we are talking about. Helen Keller was a blind lady. 
She said, I would rather have this kind of sight than this kind of sight. This kind of sight speaks about seeing things for what they can be, not what they are now. Focusing on the ultimate and not focusing on the immediate and being tossed around by the dictates of your environment. I'll submit to you tonight that having this kind of vision is good. Most of us have it. Having this kind of vision is better. But when you combine these two kinds of visions, now that's the best. The first wall we want to build together is a wall called hindsight. We must be able to, when we're creating our businesses or when you join a business and you are told you are now at the helm of the business, you now need to run this organization going into the future. Go in there with a mindset that says, there was a foundation. Let's look at the corporate memory. What are the things that have been there before I came on board? What are the stories? There was a beginning at some point. Firm foundations that were set up by those that founded the organization. What are those things? What are the founding values of this organization? What are the stories that people can tell about where the organization has been? All these are critical. We are putting brick upon brick so that we build a critical wall called hindsight. What are the critical success stories? What are the values? What are the principles on which this, build, this organization is resting? It's about legacy. It's about looking at what is there and saying, we need to know where we have come from. Now, here is the error that normally happens. You jump into a business and you don't know the successes and the failures that have been there. You repeat easily the mistakes that everybody else has done who is ahead of you. When you don't take time to analyze where we have come from. What is the original intent? What did the founder think of? And you as an individual who is also starting a business, where have you come from in terms of your corporate history? What are the uncertainties and the anxieties that people have had in the organization? When this wall is built, make sure there is no crack in that particular wall. When you see a crack in that particular wall, it's your responsibility to mend that wall to ensure that it's strong enough to stand the test of time. I said leadership is about sight. We've just built wall number one, hind sight. There's a second wall that you need to think about, and that's a wall called insight. Insight is being able to use your knowledge, your skills, your abilities, the wisdom that you've gathered over a period of time to be able to push the organization into the future. You use wisdom. You make decisions on a day-to-day -day basis. You will not always make the right decisions, by the way. But as a leader, you stand up every single day and say, I learned from the past decisions I've made, the mistakes I've made, and I pick the organization and take it to the future. It's about being proactive, being, being able to anticipate the need that customers have and working now to be able to produce products that can change people's lives. This is a war called insight. What are your skills, I ask you? What are your abilities? Are you hands-on the business that you have? You use the insight that you have, that you have built around you, mentors, books, all the information around you to be able to take your organization into the, into the future. Insight is being able to prioritize the resources that are there. You may not have a bottomless budget, but the few resources that you have at your disposal, insight will help you to build the organization that lasts and stands the test of time. I ask you, what are you doing about your understanding of business? What are you doing about your understanding of knowledge, uh, knowledge around economies and things that are happening around you? Risk taking, being able to use what you have to build what you want to see. We talked about the first wall, the wall of hindsight. Now we've just built another wall together. Put all these bricks in one space and we call this wall the wall of insight. I'm going to talk about yet another critical wall that each and every single one of us have to understand that it's our, it's our responsibility for us to be able to build it and sustain it and preserve it. The third wall, ladies and gentlemen, is a wall called oversight. You have responsibility as you make decisions on a day-to-day -day basis. You can't take your eyes off the plow the dictates of the environment call on you 
to be able to take responsibility for every decision you make. You are more accountable even to your stakeholders as you rise up the ladder in your organization. What are the products? What are the partnerships that you have? What are the practices of the organization? You can't delegate certain things you have to put your hands on the plow so that you take responsibility, so that you are accountable for everything that is happening. You have people around you. People are always the problem, and as they say, people are always the solution. You have an oversight. It's looking at your business and saying, we may have hit rock bottom, but we will not cry. We will examine the rock. It may be a diamond. We may be caught between a rock and a hard place, but we will not cry again. We will blast the rock and create a quarry business. That's having oversight. That's taking responsibility for the where the organization is going. You have to run a profitable business. You have to be able to have a plan for where the organization is going. You have influence over those around you. Exert that influence and build the business that you want to see. The last wall that we need to build is a wall called foresight. Now, foresight is not focusing on where we have come from. Every single one of the walls we have talked about just now are all critical. Foresight is being able to Look into the future, but coming back to the present to say, what can we do now to take the organization where it's supposed to be? Foresight is being able to be aspirational. Where do we see ourselves in five years, 10, 15 years? How sustainable is our current business model? We live in the age of disruption. Where are we taking this organization? What do our people need? Their needs keep evolving. And are we positioned enough? Do we have the right people right now to take ourselves into the future? And as we go into the future, how do we know that we have succeeded? And the biggest danger that entrepreneurs have across the continent is a sense of arrival before the journey even begins. A sense of, we have made it. What are your metrics that you're using to show, and to, uh, to show yourself that you have arrived? Are you ambitious enough? What targets are you setting for yourselves? What are the goals that you have before you? What solutions are you providing? Money flows in the direction of value. Are you producing value that people can be able to look at and say, this is what we want to see. Are you patient enough as you have sown seed into the ground to be able to see this vision growing into the future, or we want results here and now? Foresight is being able to say, here is where we are, but this is not where we are going to be forever. Here is where we are, but we can push this vision into the future. We see something bigger. Remember, you are using this vision, not necessarily this vision. Because when you use this vision, you'll be distracted or you'll be disturbed by what the environment is dictating. Somebody once said, a good soldier does not spend time fighting the weather. A good soldier spends time fighting within the weather. So it doesn't matter what your operating environment dictates. It doesn't stop you from dreaming. Results, results, results. In this world, you are not rewarded for just having good thoughts. But it's what you do with your current thoughts to create results and results that we can all see and touch. I'll leave you with a few questions. When is the last time you audited your own capabilities to position yourself for your organization? When is the last time you looked at the walls around you, the walls of leadership, your own capabilities and said, there's a crack and I need to do something about it? Remember the lady from the village with all the wise counsel received, didn't do much. The house came tumbling down. The four walls of leadership that you need to consider, every time you are at work, every time you are running a business, every time you wake up to go and into the marketplace, think about where we have come from. Think about the insight that you have gathered over a period of time. Think about the reason that you are alive and that you are, you've been given a mandate in that organization to have oversight over what is happening, the systems, the people, the processes, the practices. But more than anything else, you're driving an organization into the future. Think about the future and ask yourself, are you ready and well positioned for the future? And are you doing enough so that the organization can be sustainable, the organization can be profitable for the long haul. It is your responsibility to think about these walls. It is your responsibility to build strong walls. It is also your responsibility to ensure that when you see a crack in your own personality, in your own leadership style, in your preferences, your priorities, you do something about it. The people around you depend on it. 
The systems around you depend on it. And your vision depends on it. With that, 